Hey, YouTube, it's John again. Um, yeah, I haven't seen you guys in a while, other than the comments section. So here's the story. I, uh, when spring came around, most of you know who've been following this channel for a while know that I don't usually start shooting videos until it warms up. I ride in the winter, but I don't ride as much, and I don't ride for as long. So I don't, I don't tend to shoot videos as often. Um, but anyway, so this spring, around March or so, I guess, I went out to uh, shoot uh, the first vlog of the year, and my camera uh, wouldn't wouldn't turn on. So I sent it back to Cena. I had a Cena Prism, and it took a couple of months before they finally sent me a new one. And when they did, they didn't send the battery back, even though they told me to send them the battery when I sent them the camera. It was a big mess. Uh, but I'm finally here, um, back. I mean, I could have fired up my old drift camera. I still have that, but uh, for whatever reason, I chose not to. But I'm here, and I'm back, and I'm back online. And I'm pretty excited about that. I'm excited to be shooting a video again, even though it's almost June. First one of the year. It's kind of crazy. I don't know about where you live, but it's been a, a fairly warm and rainy spring. Um, we've already had temperatures well into the 90s. Uh, we're supposed to in the early part of next week, which I love. I, I like it hot. I mean, I like it 80, 85, 90 degrees. I love that. Uh, but some people are different. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the warm weather. But anyway, as I'm riding along this morning, uh, before I took off, I uh, went through my comments. I, was, I got a couple weeks behind and went through and answered comments. And I had, uh, I think, one or two comments that I've had before regarding the purchase of this bike that said, well, why didn't you just buy the Harley? And riding behind this Harley got me thinking about that. I don't know this guy, but uh, he's riding staggered, so I'll ride staggered behind him. But anyway, um, you know, I, I really don't dislike the pretentiousness of that, uh, of that comment. The notion is that everybody really wants a Harley and that Harleys are the best and that if you choose to buy a different bike, um, it's due to some sort of compromise, right? It's because you uh, couldn't afford a Harley or something like that. Um, and I think that's a very interesting perspective. I think Harley-Davidson's marketing, which, you know, it's, it's good. It's an American company, so that's cool, I guess. But I think Harley-Davidson's marketing um, has done a fantastic job of making it in the mindset of many that Harley Davidson is simply the de facto best motorcycle and everybody else is just a cheaper alternative for those who can't afford one or uh, or for some other reason. And I don't know that's necessarily the case. I'm not going to get into this too much because I already did a whole video on my perspective on Harleys versus metrics. I did it a couple years ago. And the conclusion I drew was that I like both. In fact, it was a really hard decision until the Vicero came out. And I'll get to that story real quick. Basically, um, I was looking for a bigger touring bike. That's what I wanted, right? And so I was shopping. Um, one of the first ones I rode was the Harley Davidson Ultra Classic, uh, and I really liked it. Uh, there was a couple things I didn't like, namely that the cockpit was a little more cramped than some of the other bikes out there. The bike is, was just as big as all the others, but the bars were closer, the floorboards were higher, uh, and the end result was just a little bit more of a cramped cockpit than a lot of other bikes. Now that all can be changed with accessories, but um, you know that's just a, it's still a, a, a knock against it. Um, I didn't like the leg heat, although most big bikes, even liquid cooled, have some. I didn't like how much leg heat there was when I was still rolling down the highway. And the Harley Davidson Touring Platform only has three inches of suspension travel. And on a road like this that I'm riding right now, you probably won't be able to tell the difference between this bike and the Harley Ultra Classic. But when you get on rougher roads, or you're in parking lots with lots of bumpiness and stuff like that, it's very noticeable. And uh, and I really didn't like that. Things I loved about it, though, I, I loved the you know the power, I loved the sound, I liked the looks, I loved the dashboard. That was uh, the one I was looking at was an Ultra Limited, which had uh, a little bit different gauges. Um, I loved the tremendous accessory support network that there is. There's all kinds of accessories available, the dealer network and everything else. But I rode a couple other bikes. I rode a, a, a Indian Chieftain. I was thoroughly disappointed in that bike. I didn't like the way it rode. I didn't like the way I liked the way it looked. But everything was when you actually uh, in pictures. When we actually get up to it up close, everything is so chintzy and plasticky and cheap. And I know I'm running a metric, and metrics have that reputation, and it was well deserved 20 years ago. But the quality of metric motorcycles has improved a lot. And while there's plenty of plastic chrome on this bike, um, you know, all this stuff is plastic chrome all through here. It, it doesn't look as cheap as the Indian Chieftain's chrome was. So I knew the Indian Chieftain had plastic chrome, but that's obviously not something that bothers me uh, with, uh, you know, owning a Kawasaki before and owning another Kawasaki now. It was just the way it looked. It really didn't look great. Um, but there were aspects of it I liked. Um, the technology blows everybody else away, full stop, period. 
you've got Bluetooth on the radio, you've got an electronic windscreen. A lot of features that are kind of reserved for high-end sport touring bikes. And I've always been frustrated. I even did a video about this, how frustrated I am at the lack of technology that's available on cruiser motorcycles. You know, so many motorcycles, uh, the cruiser persuasion, are like this one. Pretty basic when it comes to technology. I have ABS, so there's a stereo, and there is even an iPod hookup here in this club box um, that I have to adapt because it's the 30-pin connector. I have to adapt it for my phone, even though the 30-pin connector, correct me if I'm wrong, it was like 2011 or 2012 that Apple got rid of that. This is a 2014-year motorcycle. The only option is the 30-pin connector. So anyway, long story short, I was pretty impressed with some things, overall unimpressed. I rode a Kawasaki Voyager, and it was kind of my favorite so far. I really liked it. I wasn't super thrilled with the styling, but I loved the way it rode, and I, the dashboard was my favorite. And then, let me tell you, dashboard's way down on the list as far as important stuff. But hey, I mean, it's there. And of course, it looks really cool. So I hemmed and hawed for months, and I rode them again, I test rode, I participated in demo rides, I even considered sport touring bikes, I considered another kind of more basic cruiser like a Nomad, uh, or a Harley-Davidson um, uh, road, um, yeah, road King. You know, I was just, just unsure. But I kind of, I finally decided on the Voyager. I thought the Voyager is my favorite bike of all the ones I've ridden. There's something about it that it just doesn't scream out to me as, as being the bike I love. But it was my favorite bike to ride, right? So it was my favorite bike to ride. I enjoyed riding it more than I rode the other bikes. So in my mind, I thought, well, okay, that is um, the bike for me then if it's the one I enjoy riding the most. So as I'm shopping around, the, Harley, the, uh, the dealership, uh, it is a Harley dealership, but the dealership that I buy, have bought my bikes from, their combined dealership, had this 2014 Vaquero. Now the thing about this color is, I had planned on painting my 900 this exact color, but then I thought, you know, instead of spending a couple grand painting the bike, I'm going to buy a new bike, and then I'll paint that bike, this or this kind of sunfire orange color, because I love that color. I saw it on a 69 Plymouth Cuda a guy had at a car show, and uh, a color really similar to this. And I thought, that's, I mean, I never would have said orange is my favorite color, uh, but I thought, man, the way that color looks in the sun, that's it. So then Kawasaki comes out with this bike. It's the color I want. And it's the Voyager, basically. Right under the hood, it's the Voyager. But it did something for me. The side opening bags, the stretched out back end, uh, you know, just the look and style of it, the mix of black and chrome. A lot of things I didn't think I'd like, but all mixed together, I just fell in love with the bike. And I can honestly say that I'm riding my dream bike. If you gave me a million dollars, I would buy a bunch of other bikes, but uh, I wouldn't get rid of this one. And if you gave me a million dollars and told me that I could buy any bike in the world, but I had to trade this bike in, I wouldn't do it. Honestly, that's the honest truth. There is not another bike I'd buy instead of this one. There's plenty I'd buy in addition to, and that includes some Harleys. Uh, but there, honestly, right now, of any bike I'm aware of, there is no motorcycle for any amount of money that I'd rather have than this one. And that isn't to say it's the best motorcycle in the whole world that it doesn't have its faults. But for me, for what I like, it ticks all my boxes, and it's just perfect. The styling is cool. I love the way it rides. I never get sick of riding it. I never get sick of, of how much I enjoy it. It's comfortable. I can ride it all day. I ride it for hundreds or thousands of miles on a trip, and I love it. Uh, and that's really cool. It's really cool to love a bike. It's really cool to, to not be drooling over some other bike that you can't have or something like that. It's really cool to be riding your favorite bike. To own your dream bike has got to be one of the coolest feelings. Uh, I'm just really, really lucky that my dream bike is not a prohibitively expensive special edition, you know, $40,000 motorcycle. Uh, in fact, I got a great deal on this bike. Um, but back to the comment, you know, why did you just get the Harley? I don't like that attitude, especially somebody who likes Harley Davidson as a company, who likes the history behind them, who likes the styling. The bikes are less reliable, and I, that's not an opinion thing. I mean, it, it, Consumer Reports is kind of the authority when it comes to reliability because they, they simply study objective facts, right? They study uh, information from dealerships and mechanics and things like that, and they come up with what they call a failure rate. And, and what they call a failure is essentially a, a major repair needed within the first three years of uh, ownership. And Harley-Davidson's failure rate um, is significantly higher than Kawasaki's. Honda's is the lowest at around 11%. Um, I don't want to give you Harley's number right now because it may have changed since I last looked a year ago. I mean, I haven't looked since I, I stopped shopping and bought the bike I wanted. But it's significantly higher year after year, along with BMW. Harley-Davidson and BMW remain two of the least reliable brands. But here's the fantastic thing, is that Consumer Reports also interviews owners. 
And owners uh, of Harley-Davidson motorcycles and BMW motorcycles are the most satisfied. So even though Harley owners tend to fix their bikes more often, uh, you know, in the, I mean, you have lots of examples of a guy who's got a metric that kept breaking and a Harley that lasted forever. There's plenty of anecdotal evidence, but across the board, Harley owners fix their bikes more, but they like their bikes more, right? So, you know, that's the thing. I get it, and I get why people are so passionate about their Harleys, because I know what it's like to really, really love a motorcycle. Um, and that says a lot, that when a motorcycle is statistically unreliable, and people love it, it means that I don't care that I have to fix it once in a while, because I really enjoy riding it. Because even if this bike wasn't super reliable, uh, I don't think I could own it if it was really unreliable, if I had to do significant repairs all the time. But if it wasn't, you know, a very reliable motorcycle, I'd still own it, and I'd still enjoy it. Because it'd be worth it, just like it's worth it to put tires on it, put gas in it, and worth it to buy in the first place. I already own a car. I don't have any need for a motorcycle. Um, and I wouldn't want to get rid of my car for a motorcycle. So, you know, there's a lot of expense out the window just for the enjoyment of riding it. So why shouldn't you ride a motorcycle that's less reliable if it's the one you want? But I still want to challenge that attitude, that attitude that Harley-Davidson is the, is the um, shall we say, the... Uh, the litmus test for motorcycles, the uh, the one that we're all comparing them to. If you know the history of motorcycles, you know that although Harley-Davidson um, kind of claims to be the original, it's not quite the case. Um, for decades, Beachwind motorcycles existed long, long before Harley-Davidson or Indian. Indian was the predecessor to Harley-Davidson, but they weren't the first either. Europe had a number of V-Twin motorcycle manufacturers or even V-Twins in cars. But as the economy uh, downturned, as World War One happened, and, uh, and then after, which, which did a lot to Europe, and after that, the economic downturn in the United States, kind of Harley was the last man standing in a lot of ways. So they've kind of claimed that image because they're the last of that breed. They're the last of that original crop of B-Twin motorcycles. But they're no more the original than Matchless or, uh, or Merlin or any of the other companies who were producing B-Twins in, in the very late 1800s, right? So, I mean, a couple decades after the Civil War, there were B-Twin motorcycles. So the notion that Harley Davidson uh, invented something in 1903 that had existed since the 1890s is, you know, a little far-fetched. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's that, that's my feelings on it. I know I'm rambling a bit. That's the first video of the year, but that's kind of my feelings on it. You know, the metrics aren't a copy. Um, they're not the cheap alternative, but they are that too. You know, there aren't metric motorcycles that are pretty clearly a copy. You're not going to find a Harley that looks like this. The the Road Glide is what's in its class with a fixed fairing. But it's its own style of motorcycle. It is a V-twin, but again, uh, the V-twin isn't where things are copied, unless you want to call Harley a copy. Uh, and there are metrics that people buy, and they'd rather have a Harley, but the metrics are more, less expensive. But the notion that that's everybody, I think I want to challenge that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, especially if you own a Harley-Davidson or own a metric motorcycle. If you think that, uh, if you think like me, that people can enjoy, love and enjoy both, and that it's not always a decision of compromise, that you could own a metric or own a Harley, and not compromise on anything. This notion is constantly out there that to own a metric is to compromise because you can't afford a Harley, or to own a Harley is to compromise because of the unreliability. But maybe that's not the case. Love to hear your comments below, and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys more uh, as the uh, season progresses. Um, first motorcycle trip is coming up here in a couple of weeks, so I'll do some videos from that. We'll be in Canada. So uh, my Canadian friends, I uh, can't wait to uh, come be in your country and find out what your roads are like. Uh, so Mexico was last year, and uh, I rented a motorcycle there. Um, I didn't take mine, uh, but I'm taking mine to Canada. So the Vaquero will uh, do its first trip outside the United States, and I'm excited about that. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. God bless. Bye-bye.